from Able Motorworks again. It's bike hauling Monday. I know that because I just went to go and pick up the head for the ZXR rebuild and they're not there. So that was a waste of at least an hour. But there we go, that's one of those. So today we have got a couple of things to go on. Uh, firstly, had a couple of uh, comments, really good comments the other day. Uh, one of them, which is you may have already noticed, a friend of mine let me borrow his camera. So hopefully we've got much better sound, much better video from now on. It actually records in 4K, which is awesome. Secondly, uh, I had a couple of comments. One of them was, I should do some more what he classed as nitty gritty, uh, in-depth stuff. People want to see, you know, uh, parts being made and that kind of thing. So hopefully in the future, I will have a video of that up, um, which would be quite good. Uh, I'll see how that goes. I'll see what I can film in that terms. And the second comment was actually about me, who I am and such likes. He actually told me I should probably do a video on me. It feels very weird having to talk about myself for five or ten minutes or so, but that might happen at some point. I'll record it and see what happens and then uh, I'll let you know if it gets posted. So there might be a bit, little bit about me video up. And also someone wanted a couple of days ago a video of the workshop. So maybe a tour at some point, which should be cool to show you what I've got here and what I do. That'd be good. So there are a couple of videos that might come about, but let's crack on with today. So today's job is to fit the oil tank to the Triton. We're going to do that this morning. Let me show you what we've mocked up already. We have sourced this new, or it's not new, it's second hand, it was previously fitted, oil tank to a Triton. Uh, it's a lot nicer than what the old one was. This one, I think it's fiberglass. Uh, it's not very nice at all. Fiberglass. Everything is just not nice, it doesn't quite fit very well. So we've got a much nicer little aluminium one with a built-in battery tray as well, which is a lot nicer. So what we've done is we've just mocked it up. I've made this aluminium loop bracket at the back. I don't know if I'm going to use it in the final fixings, but it's good now to work out exactly where it's going to lie. So what we've done is we have matched uh, the bottom of the, the top of the tank to the frame rail, so that sits nice and flush there. Obviously, the seat cutout which is a, a big Triton feature, is where you get to the actual oil tank. So um, that sits nice and central. This is, uh, we actually had quite a bit of issue with the tank that we've got, so um, we've actually had to send it back and do that. So I've made this quite neutral, so we've got quite a lot of room if we have to come up with a different length tank. So there's loads of options on there, which is good. Um, we just got a cover. Now we've got a fixed position for the actual oil tank. I will now start making the other fixings. Obviously it's got to be fixed very well. We're going to uh, I've decided we're going to mount the actual coils underneath here, so we have two hidden coil mounts and then down in the bottom here is that exactly where we're going to have the oil filler. So it's nice accessible from underneath when you do oil changes. So um, yeah, everything should work out really nice for this one. So that's today's job. I'll try and do a little bit of time lapse so you can see what's going on. So I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to make the front mount. I think what I've decided is I'm going to use a uh, round steel bar. I've decided I'm going to use 10 rather than 8 mil round. It's a bit more structurally sturdy. This uh, oil tank obviously has quite a lot of weight to it. With the battery as well, it's got a sturdy mount. So I've gone with round bar uh, because I think it's going to fit in better with the frame. Uh, it's going to be in parallel with this tube here. So hopefully I will be able to make it sink into the frame. It'll be powder coated the same colour as the frame, so hopefully you won't even see it. So how I always start doing something like this, is with a piece of welding wire. I will cut this and shape it roughly to where we want it. Um, that way I can get the right lengths. It bends nice and easy. I can get all my angles set and then I can just take the angles straight off this. So I'll make it roughly, won't take long, should take five, 10 minutes. So I'll make it very roughly in, uh, in, in welding wire and then I will take the measurements off that, put it onto the bar, then go into my little shop and make it. And then that's what we'll do. So I'm getting a hang of these uh, time lapse things. The first one was every three seconds I took a photo. That one was every two seconds. I still think it's a bit quick, but hey, we'll get there. This is what I can't with. So this took me 10 minutes in uh, to make it in welding wire. Whereas if I would have bent it in steel, it probably would take me an hour and a half. So um, and now I know this is what I want. I started out with a real sharp right angle. Uh, so it didn't look very good because it really came out quite far. So I've gone with a double uh, double 45 rather than a single right angle. You just bought the 
bought the sides and hopefully I'll hide it a bit better. Also, um, I've decided to not make it straight. It's probably quite hard to see on the camera, but it's got a slight step in it. Uh, it's because the two, I want this to be directly upright so it matches this rear tube, but if I take it upright, then the actual mounting point isn't gonna be right. So I had to put a little sideways step in it. It looks good still because it's still upright. So that's what we've come up with. Um, now I'll make this in the steel, uh, all, and then I'll have to weld the flat tabs on the sides of the steel that will then bolt to the, the uh, engine mount and then the oil tank. So the next part of this is to make this in steel. This is my little machine shop, or dirty room as I call it. In here I do everything that's grinding, you know, the dirty work, any welding, grinding, I tend to try and do it in here as much as I can so I can keep outsides as clean as possible. So it's nice to have a sealed room, keep all the dirt and the dust in if I haven't done anything like that. There is something that I wanted to say before I started showing you any you know, fabrication and such like is I'm not an engineer and I'm not a fabricator. It is not my background. Uh, it's all stuff that I've learned through wanting to learn it and had a real passion for it or I have just done through word of mouth or research myself. So I'm not an engineer by any stretch of the imagination. It's all just me having fun and what I've learned. So this side of my work, I don't advertise, I don't push it at all. Like the mechanical side where I do a few, you know, Instagram posts, I've done a few, you know, just try to advertise the mechanical side of things because that's my background. I'm not engineer based, I'm mechanical based as a background. So this side of me is very experimental, it's very what I've learned through the time and um, all the customers that I do this kind of fab work for is usually, I'd say almost 100% of the time is because it's either word of mouth by someone who I do mechanical stuff for, or they're already existing mechanical customers that want me to do a few bits and pieces. So the Triton restoration, I've done this Harley for the last year. And then the BMW build, I've done six or seven bikes and things for him in the past. So it's um, it's a real, you know, one of the things that I wanted here because I really wanted it. I'm really passionate about this side of thing. I really love doing it. But it is not my trade. It is the secondary part to my mechanical side. But you know, people really want to see me do it. But saying that, um, I will put it up and I'm really happy for people to comment and you know tell me where I'm going wrong. If anyone can teach me anything through these videos, that is a big bonus. That makes these videos worth doing. So if you want to teach me anything, tell me I'm doing something incorrectly, tell me I'm doing something right, or tell me a better way of doing it, that'd be absolutely brilliant. I'd love to learn some more stuff through these videos. That'd be awesome. So saying that, let's make this little bracket. Oh, that's it all. That's the first part of the bracket now finished. We have cleaned off or welded and cleaned off both flats for the bolts, drilled the first hole so that we can uh, mount it by one hole and then we can see and make sure that it lines up before we drill the others and then we can always do them in line. Um, flattened off the two maintenance surfaces so we get a nice good flat surface. But yeah, it's come out all right. We've got the bend, we've got the kink in it that we were after. It come out really well and actually, it matches pretty well to what we first came up with. So, there we go. We'll try this on the bike now. So we've now got it mounted on the bike. All the support's now taken off. It's now just resting on the two brackets. So, what we've done is we've just bolted it on one hole here at the bottom, and we'll do the next one when we're happy with the position. I've gone underneath and I've marked up where it's mounting, um, so I can take it off as a whole assembly and mount it all as one. I've also marked up the rear bracket as well, 
Um, I think I am going to use this aluminium bracket on the rear. It's definitely going to need some shaping, um, some bits taken out of it. It's way too wide, too blocky at the minute. But um, I've just got a, a very basic fit line marked on that for that. So now we know we're happy with the fit. We've still got that nice line or that nice gap under here. So uh, where it reaches the top of the frame, um, the fins match up with the top of the box as well. So we've got that nice straight line and it's nice and as you look around the back, it's nice and central and in line with the tire. So that's good. So we're happy with it. So now I will take it off with the box, mount it all up as one, see what I can do with this secondary bracket here on the back and then we'll see how it goes. So the oil tank is now all mounted. We've got the front mount and then we've got this big bottom mount which is all now tacked in place. I'm not going to show you my aluminium welding. Fortunately, there's enough thickness and enough room for me to go around and tidy this up completely afterwards. So that will be done on the bench. That's all tacked in position. Front mount's real nice and sturdy. This is absolutely solid. That is brilliant. Um, also, I did check before, but we've got clearance for the carburetor. This isn't the right manifold, but it's about the same thickness as the correct one. So we've got plenty of, of uh, clearance there. Obviously, got clearance on the seat as well, and plenty of room for the coils and the oil filter to go in here as well. So excellent, happy with that. So that's that this morning's job. This afternoon I'm going to do some mechanical stuff. I might, I probably won't put it in a video, it's a bit boring. So I've got a couple of mechanical jobs to do. And then, yeah, I hope I'll get another video done tomorrow. So that's it for today's video. Uh, I hope you like the new camera. It's amazing. Look, it works off my phone. Anyway, it's amazing. Uh, so thanks Murray Gorman for the lend of the camera. It's been brilliant today. Uh, hopefully I'll get better at the time lapses as well. Uh, I think they got better through the video as I changed the settings on them, but that was pretty cool. Um, you know, usual stuff, like, subscribe, tell a friend, that'd be awesome. Um, thank you very much.